some of them have been wrong, that some of them have misunderstood us. Ishara zake za uongozi zilijumuisha mwengo. Rungu ya kutembea na kofia iliyotiwa nakshi za Kiafrika. Kwa pamoja ishara hizi zilitoa taswira na simulizi za kiongozi aliyeheshimika. There has been no cleaving. Hayakuwa mapambo tu ila yalimpa utambulisho kama rais wa kwanza wa Kenya. He has brought hope and pride to our people who have been oppressed in the past. Mzee alivyotambulika na wengi alionekana kiongozi mwenye busara na maarifa. Jomo Kenyatta alikuwa mwanamume mwenye kimo cha wastani na alipenda kufuga ndefu kubwa mbali na kuchana nywele yake akirudisha nyuma. Lakini Kenyatta alitajika kwa mambo mengi tu. Kwanza alikuwa seremala msomaji wa mita za maji bali na kuwa karani wa sto ya jiji la Nairobi sifa hizi zikipamba historia ya Kamau wa Mwigai ambaye alikuja kuitwa Johnson Kamau na hatimaye mzee Jomo Kenyatta alitajwa kama kiongozi mwenye mvuto na aliyekuwa na ulimi mtamu I think I have spoken enough in this language It is not my wish that I should be speaking to you in a foreign and for that matter in colonialistic language Tarehe 12 Disemba mwaka wa 1963 Jomo Kenyatta akiwa mwenye umri wa miaka sabini, alichukua hatamu za uongozi kama waziri mkuu Na kisha rais wa kwanza Kenya ilipoundwa Jamhuri mwaka wa 1964 Jina lake limechorwa kwenye makala ya historia ya Kenya kama shujaa wa uhuru lakini kwa mamilioni ya wakenya sasa na hata wakati ule atasalia kuwa mzee jina alilopewa kulingana na umri na hekima aliyokuwa nayo Wakati wa utawala wake wa miaka kumi na minne, Jomo Kenyatta alijulikana kwa mitindo yake ya kipekee. Koti lake la ngozi lilikuwa nembo yake ya kisiasa na alilivaa katika mikutano ya kitaifa na kisiasa. Pete kubwa kidoleni fimbo iliyochongwa vizuri na mwengo mwengo walikuwa ishara ya amani lakini riwaya ya Jomo Kenyatta ilianza wakati Kenya ilikuwa imewekwa tu chini ya ukoloni wa Uingereza Alizaliwa kama Wangegi mwaka wa 1894 katika kijiji cha Gatundu eneo la Mlima Kenya. 
wakati huo mataifa ya bara Europa yalikuwa kwenye mapigano ya kujigawania ardhi na rasilimali barani Afrika. Kenya ilijipata chini ya minyororo ya Uingereza. Baada ya masomo yake katika shule za wamishonari, alifanya kazi kadhaa kabla ya kujiunga na harakati za kisiasa kupitia chama cha Kikuyu Central Association. When we formed the Kikuyu Central Association, Kenyatta was still an employee of the Nairobi municipality. We discovered that he was a clever man who knew the English language well. And since none of us could speak the language, we decided to engage his services. When we later appointed him Secretary General of our party, he was called into the government office and told, if you have become a member of that association, tell us right now and you will be fired. If you don't want to be fired, say so, and you will be prosecuted and imprisoned for contravening government employment regulations by joining a political association. Kenyatta agreed to give up his job. Ukao mwanzo wa juhudi zake katika vuguvugu lililopigania haki za Waafrika katika serikali ya kikoloni. Kama mkikuyu, Kenyatta alisafiri hadi jijini London mwaka wa 1929 kupinga pendekezo la Uingereza la kujumuisha himaya ya Afrika Mashariki hali iliyoonekana kukandamiza haki za jamii za Kenya wakiwemo wakikuyu. alifaulu kwenye harakati hizi Akiwa rais wa chama cha Kau Kenya Africa Union Jomo Kenyatta alifungwa miaka saba gerezani kuanzia mwaka wa 1953 kwa tuhuma za kushirikiana na kundi la Mau Mau kukamatwa na kufungwa kwa Kenyatta na wenzake watano hal maarufu Kapenguria 6 hakukusitisha mapigano dhidi ya ukoloni wapiganiaji huru waliosalia waliendeleza kampeni za kutaka ukoloni kufika kikomo na kuachiliwa kwa mzee Jomo Kenyatta na wenzake Jomo Kenyatta is the father of the African nationalism and the African national movement in this country But surely you're all rather more advanced than he is in your thinking about politics. Wouldn't he embarrass you if he was really let go now? We cannot be, we cannot in any sense be more advanced than our teacher and master, whom I think is much more advanced in political outlook in this country than we are. We are still in just in the stages of learning politics from him. Jaramogi, uh... With the other African uh, members, I uh, asked the colonial government to allow them to visit Mzee Kenyatta. They visited, so they discussed pol politics and the future of the country. He's a lot, he's capable, he's completely well informed, and I am satisfied with him as the leader of this country. And after the Jeremogi had joined legislative council with Wakinangala and Akina um, uh, Masinde Muliro, uh, President Moy and Ronald Ngalanda, the, the question of Kenyatta came up in the parliament. And uh, Jeremogi stood up and said, unless and until Muzi Kenyatta was released to lead the African people, It, it, it would be very difficult for the Africans to accept another person as a leader of, of Kenya. The majority of African people, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, was their second god. 
and Uhuru na Kenyatta meant that uh, Kenya should attain its independence uh, after the release of Jomo Kenyatta and the other um, fighters that had been imprisoned with him in, in Kapenguria and, and elsewhere. Tare kumna nne, mwezi agosto mwako elfu moja, miatisa stila moja, Jomo Kenyatta aliachili wa huru. Kwa achili wa kwake, kuliongeza kilio cha uhuru. So many people came because the news just spread out uh, like wildfire and they tried to speak to them. We must show the world that some of them has been wrong, that some of them have misunderstood us and it's only by our action they will know that we mean business. Kenyatta na wapiga naji wengine wakiwemo Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, Tom Boya, Paul Ngei, Kungu Karumba, Masinde Mliro, Ronald Ngala, Ochenga Oneko waliendelea na mazungumzo ya kuundwa kwa katiba ya Kenya iliyohuru. Mzee alingaa na kupaa miongoni mwa viongozi waliokuwa kipigania ukombozi wa Kenya. Alikuwa mwenye umri wa juu kuliko viongozi waliokuwa kwenye mapambano hayo na alirindima kwa sauti na mienendo ya kiongozi shupavu. When do you want independence for Kenya? Today. What means are you ready to adopt to achieve independence? Constitutional means. And do you condemn mama violence and oath taking? Well, I have never approved of any violence at all. Na hivyo akawa chaguo tosha la viongozi wote akiwemo Jaramogi Oginga Odinga aliyekataa shawishi la wakoloni la kutaka awe waziri mkuu wa kwanza. My leadership has not been to darkness and, 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 and death but to light and prosperity. Akiwa mwenye umri wa miaka zaidi ya sabini, Kenyatta alikula kiapo kama waziri mkuu wa kwanza wa Kenya iliyohuru. Mwaka mmoja baadaye, Kenyatta alibadilisha katiba na kufanya Kenya kuwa jamhuri na yeye akawa rais wa kwanza. Baraza lake la mawaziri lilijumuisha viongozi kutoka kabila mbalimbali katika juhudi za kuleta pamoja taifa lililokuwa limeumbishwa na ukoloni. Harambe, neno lililotokana na lugha ya Kihindi likawa kibagizo cha uongozi wa Kenyatta aliyewarai wa Kenya kuungana pamoja kupambana na changamoto zilizowakumba. Na hakusita kuonyesha nani aliyekuwa usukani bali na kuwafanya wakuu wa mikoa kuwa na umaarufu zaidi uongozi wa Kenyatta ulichukua mkondo wa kiimla. Baadhi ya viongozi hawakukubaliana na mbinu alizotumia Kenyatta kuendesha serikali. Walimtaja miongoni mwa viongozi wa bara la Afrika waliokaidi ahadi za uhuru na kuweka serikali za kiimla. Fedha mali na mamlaka iliyobuniwa kupitia kanuni za kibepari au capitalism kwa lugha ya kimombo ilisalia mikononi mwa jamaa na marafiki wa Kenyatta Wakati huo Marekani na Uingereza zilikuwa zinapambana dhidi ya kuenea kwa ukomunisti na hazikuwa tayari kupoteza taifa hili jipya kwa mataifa ya Mashariki. 
na hivyo ndivyo Kenya ilijipata ndani ya mtego wa vita vya kiitikadi kati ya ubepari na ukomunisti hususan kati ya Marekani na umoja wa Soviet Fitina za vita hivi tata zikawa upanga uliopasua moyo wa serikali ya Kenya So instead of Kanu remaining solid now the president found himself being supported by two groups that were equally strong so Tom Boya led the came to no be on and even the parliament became divided those same colonial you know uh, forces uh, but now uh, together with uh, people from within uh, Kanu and outside Kanu chini ya miaka mitatu baada ya uhuru Kenyatta na mdogo wake Jaramogi Oginga Odinga walitengana huko Odinga akijiuzulu wadhifa wa makamu wa rais mwaka wa 1966 na kuunda chama kipya cha Kenya People's Union KPU Kenyatta anadaiwa kupuuza mashujaa wa mamao waliokuwa misituni kupigania uhuru wa Kenya Wakosoaji wake wanasema alibuni sheria za ukandamizaji zilizotumiwa na wakoloni kufunga gerezani na kuwatesa waliokashifu serikali yake. Lakini kuanza kwa mauaji ya kisiasa ndiko kulipa sura mbaya serikali changa ya Kenyatta. Pio Gamapinto mbunge wa Kihindi aliuawa mwaka wa 1965 miaka miwili tu baada ya Kenya kupata uhuru miaka mitatu baadaye Thomas Joseph Odhiambo Mboya aliuliwa kwa mtuto wa bunduki mchana wa jua katikati mwa jiji la Nairobi alipokuwa akitoka kwenye duka la madawa la Chanis aliyemua Nation Njenga Njoroge aliuliza mbona msikamwende bwana mkubwa hadi wakati huu bado haijulikani bwana mkubwa alikuwa nani licha njoroge kuhukumiwa na kuuawa kwa kunyongwa serikali ilitia maji baridi madai yake ya kuwepo kwa bwana mkubwa mauaji ya tomboya yalizidisha uhasama wa kijamii kati ya wajaluo na wakikuyu tetesi za wajaluo zilisababisha vurugu na haikuchukua muda mrefu mauaji hayo kuzamisha zaidi uhusiano wa Kenyatta na Odinga. Miezi tatu baada ya mauaji ya Tomboya, ziara ya Rais Kenyatta mjini Kisumu ilizua tanda belua. Hakuna ni mdomo mtupu kama punda bila nalia katika msituni. Ilikuwa tarehe 25 Oktoba mwaka 1969. Wakati ambapo Kenyatta alisafiri Kisumu kufungua rasmi hospitali ya New Nyanza. Siwezi kukubali mtu au vikundi vya watu kutetea serikali yetu katika ardhi yetu tuliyoipigania. Hapana. Ilikuwa imejengwa kwa ufadhili wa umoja wa Soviet. Bayuka rafiki yangu nenda kundisha watu wako kulima mashamba yao wapate faida sherehe iliyoishia kwa umwagikaji wa damu huku walinzi wa rais na maafisa wa polisi wakifiatua risasi na kuwa zaidi ya watu hamsini baada ya vurugu kutokea karibu na jukwaa la rais uhuru wetu hauwezi kwa midomo mitupu uhuru wetu ni vitendo kuonyesha kwa vitendo ni machafuko ambayo yalizika uhusiano wa Kenyatta na Odinga kwenye kaburi la sahau. Rais Kenyatta hakuwahi tena tia lake Kisumu bali na kuhakikisha siasa za Odinga zilisalia giza totoro hadi kifo chake. Mimi nilipenda karibu na kwako wewe bwana Odinga kule juu. Nimekuisha pale kayuzi kufika mizito huko kufika majani watu walime. Na nilipokwenda huko Nilipoangalia angalia sana naambia mzee watu wanakushafieka Nete majembe ya kulima majambo mashamba haya Mimi nasema kwa njia mzuri mimi nitaleta majembe 
wanageuka wananambia mzee na nani atashimba hii shamba vyama vya kisiasa vilipigwa marufuku huku viongozi wa kisiasa walioonekana kukosoa Kenyatta wakiziua gerezani wengi watalala ndani ya jela wengi wamekushapiga pigwa na askari wajipata faida gani unafikiri mimi naweza kupenda mambo kama hayo wako na njaa wanini wewe hapa nambaye chakula na mauaji ya kisiasa hayakuchukua likizo ndefu Josiah Mwangi Kariuki ama James Kariuki aliuawa kinyama mwaka wa 1975 inadaiwa wakati mmoja kulikuwepo mkutano wa viongozi wa kuu serikalini nyumbani kwake Jomo Kenyatta eneo la Gatundu na hapo ndipo Kenyatta aliuliza nani angechukua usukani iwapo hange kuwepo yadaiwa kila mtu alishona mdomo ila tu James Kariuki alisema hange sita kujaza nafasi iwapo pengo lingetokea Haikuchukua muda mrefu kabla ya JM kupatikana ameuawa. Ripoti ya kamati ya bunge iliyochunguza mauaji hayo ilinyoshea kidole cha lawama wa ndani wa Rais Kenyatta. Kamati ya Elijah Mwangale ilimhusisha waziri Mbiu Koinange ambaye alikuwa mkwe wa Kenyatta na wanyoike thugu aliyekuwa mlinzi mkuu wa Kenyatta. Kenyatta aliamrisha Mwangale kufuta majina hayo mawili akisema watu wangedhani alihusika kwa mauaji. Agizo ambalo kamati ilitekeleza. Safari ya Jomo Kenyatta ulimwenguni ilifika tamati mwezi Agosti mwaka wa 1978. huku makamu wake Mimi Daniel Droidic Arab Moy na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa jamhuri ya Kenya akichukua hatamu za uongozi Naitwa Enoxicolia na mimi ndiye Kenyan historian